Camping, life's great escape, or at least these days there are. Technically, we've been camping for thousands of years. It's nothing new. And you can use something as simple as two sticks and a tarp and call it good. But when it comes to camping these days, there's three things I like to consider. Accessibility, comfort, and convenience. There is nothing to discredit about ground tent camping. It's probably one of the most effective, very accessible, and very affordable options out there to get you enjoying the outdoor experience without spending a whole lot of money. But it works great as a base camp, a place where you're gonna stay for a multiple amount of days on end. But if your camping trip involves multiple destinations, setting up and breaking down one of these things can be quite cumbersome. So if you wanna take your camping experience to the next level, rooftop tents is probably your solution. You wanna see what we chose to elevate our experience? Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to another video here on the Gator Overland channel. I'm John, and in today's video, I'll be doing the install and evaluation of this roof nest rooftop tent on our Gladiator Overland build. Two months wait, not a day too soon. We actually leave in three days for the San Juan mountain regions of Colorado. That's about 17 hours from where I live in Texas. I love this. This box contains a very important rooftop tent for a very important customer. That's me. So as you can see, we went with Roof Nest and chose to go with the Sparrow XL. It fit the size, dimensions, and the convenience for what we're looking for. A close runner-up was the Falcon, which is full aluminum construction and integrated extrusion rail that goes all the way around that allows you to mount accessories. Actually, if you ask me, is the better constructed of the two, but the fact that you can keep all of your bedding in this particular one, the other one is only six inches closed, so you have to take your bedding out, and just the convenience of our trips, this one won out, but the Falcon, <laughs> If that's your kind of travel, that one's awesome too. On the unboxing, I'm really impressed with how they packaged everything. You wanna go ahead and dismantle your box enough to where you can get to the latches and allow the rooftop tent to come up. There was some protective shrink wrap around there. There is also a protective film on the top and the bottom that you wanna take care of getting off as well. Now, inside the rooftop tent, you wanna get out everything. It comes with a shoe bag that should have your nuts and bolts. Sure does. And a camp light, nice. I didn't know that came with it. There's your awning poles. That is a sand-free blanket. Nice upgrade. Here's your ladder, your accessory bag that goes on the back side, or I should say the back side over there. Another shoe bag and some shipping spacers. Imagine to keep it nice and rigid so it doesn't bend in. So once all this is out of the tent, you wanna take your bag of bolts, sort out everything, make sure you have all the components that are necessary to install it on the roof, and then get started. Tools. Everything you see here is actually more than what's required to install the roof nest to the top of your rack system. All you need is a 13 millimeter wrench. If you don't have that specific wrench size, you can always opt for an adjustable crescent. If you wanna speed things up, you can use a ratcheting box stand or a ratcheting socket set. And even faster, you can use a drill with a 3 8 drive. Just make sure your battery's charged. You probably wanna have some form of measuring, whether it be a tape measure or a ruler. That way you can make sure that your roof nest is square on your rack system. And you can opt for a paint pen. This is not required, but this is what I use to reference bolts and fasteners on my vehicle to have a line and then you know if one of them has loosened over a period of time. In the previous video, we installed the Lightner rack system to the back of our vehicle. And though the roof nest does come with its own mounting hardware to mount to the load bars, I opted for the universal rooftop tent brackets you see here. It allows for you to work with the extrusion to make for a better surface area mounting point of your rooftop tent. It's not necessary, but it's definitely an upgrade for you Lightner guys. Now this part of the install is specific to those of you who are running the Lightner system. You want to slide your load bar to the furthest back position as possible, pop off your end cap, insert your rooftop tent bracket into the rail. Doesn't matter how far you go down, you'll take care of that in a minute. Second bracket here. Just want to make sure that they're all pointing towards the inside. That goes for the front and the back. Slide that down here. And Lightner recommends that you remove the rubber knobs and replace them with the provided nut. I didn't see a washer set in the package, but I could see surface area wise, you definitely need a washer or a lock washer underneath this thing. And I'll probably upgrade to that as soon as possible. Then you wanna go ahead and just snug them up, not tight, just enough to where you can still slide them back enough, but they're not floppy. Most rooftop tents, this one included, are made to be universal, fitting most any application of a horizontal load bar or rack system. Let's see what they provide us. So as you know, we'll be using the Lightner system and the opted brackets. You see a lot of U-bolt options here. They even give you a wrench and whatnot. If you're running the Lightner system, these are gonna be the only important things that you will need to look out for. Hey, look, that one's already nailed. 
basically that nut fits into that rail right there and these will slide into the rails on the underside of the rooftop tent and these will go through the brackets that were provided by Leitner. So this is all we're looking for. This bolt, I imagine there is a nut in here somewhere and basically it'll go on just like that and you'll tighten it all together. As you see here, because we opted for the Leitner rooftop tent brackets, we only need four of the slide plates. The rest of this stuff is for any other configuration out there and basically it would just be like a U-bolt situation going over the load bar. Not that it's anything less to be desirable, it's just this is simple. At 140 pounds, the rooftop tent isn't exactly light. You'll definitely need a hand getting it on the rack. Now that you have your roof nest on your load bar, it's time to locate it in the center of the load bar. Well, I have a simple solution for that. Your load bar is 60 inches long, half of 60 is 30 inches. As you can see, I've put a piece of painter's tape and I've marked a reference mark in a vertical line at 30 inches. That one we know are dead center. Now you need to find the center of the roof nest. Well, assuming these are symmetrical, I measured they're 20 inches apart. Divide that by two, that's 10 inches. I'll put a piece of painter's tape with a horizontal line. Now all we have to do is move line to line, they match up, dead center. Repeat the same thing on the front. Now once you've found center, you could have probably done this beforehand, but you'll take your slide plates and get ready for them to slide down into the rails. Make sure you have the bolt on this side, that way it doesn't spin, and it only goes in one way. Slide in, have the other one ready to go. You may need a hand to do this, but I think we can lift this up. Got one side done. The other side done. Now that you have the slide plates in the slide rail, it's as simple as moving the lightener bracket over into place, moving the slide rail back, slightly pushing up on the roof nest, and lining up the hole. It's that simple. The lightener bracket is slotted, allowing it for a full flush application up against the bottom of the roof nest. The roof nest is fully supported on the load bar, and the bracket is what holds it into place on the load bar. It's that simple. Do that four times. Roof nest did not specify what to torque these two. I know that majority of the stuff that I torqued for the lightener package was 18 foot pounds. That's what I have everything out. And we're going to go ahead and make a paint reference mark there. Reference mark there and a reference mark there. Now I can quickly see if anything's become loose while going down the road and I can tighten up if I have to. But 18 foot pounds is what I'm gonna go with. Wind noise vibration and tracking evaluation. Well, I give it a 10 because I don't even know it's there. I've been cruising for a handful of hours now. I'm uphill 70 miles an hour and I'm getting 16 and a half to 17 miles to the gallon depending on my terrain. And I will say that that does sound low, but I'm cruising with 37 inch tires. I still have the stock 410 axles on my Jeep's configuration. I plan to regear in the future to 488. We'll probably get that number up to the 18, 19 mark. I think the Jeep's aerodynamic of a brick pretty much just pushes the wind directly over the top of the rooftop tent. I've had it all the way up to 73 miles per hour. You don't want to go faster than 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour per their ratings at least and i haven't had any shift of weight tracking even behind 18 wheelers it's fantastic it's it actually probably tracks better with it up there than normal driving i've been really impressed with it to say the least and a big shout out to the Leitner design engineers for making the universal rooftop tent bracket. It pairs perfectly with the roof nest. I couldn't be happier. It probably took longer for me to get it out of the shipping crate than it did to actually fasten everything. If I wasn't doing the video, I would estimate four to 10 minutes to maybe put the roof nest on top of the Leitner rack. Awesome stuff there, guys. And as far as the Leitner rack goes for that matter, I have a clear view out the back. I had considered maybe doing half racks or a camper as well, but no obstructions in between here. I can see everything all the way around. Really happy to go with that. It does come with a caveat of exposing pretty much everything in the bed to the environments outside. I just drove through the rain for a little bit. The roof nest does do a pretty good job of keeping things dry for the most part until you come to a complete standstill. I did an evaluation of how wet the components in the bed were after a few hours drive in the rain. They were surprisingly just a little misty, but other than that, super happy with the full rack. So overview, 
I would say if you're looking at it for a truck application, I can't speak for an SUV or a car, but at this point, I'm getting no vibration, no wind variance, and even in a crosswind, we're tracking perfectly. We couldn't be happier. Ready to get this on the road, get on some trails, get on a mountain somewhere. All right, we're all leveled up. I guess the last time you saw me, we were installing the tent on top of the roof, but I figured we'd go ahead and endure the 1,100 miles and get to the great state of Colorado. That way we can finish the evaluation actually sleeping in this thing. How can you do evaluation in the driveway? I'm gonna get my lovely wife to show you how to set up the tent. This is my beautiful wife, Colleen. For those of you who've been following the channel for some time, you probably noticed it's been just me. And this is her first debut. Say hi to all our friends, Colleen. Hi, friends. What I'm gonna do is get Colleen to show how easy it is to elevate the roof nest. So there is a positive latch with a little button. You're gonna do that. And there's one on the driver's side that you'll do as well. Next, for better access, I'm gonna get Colleen to lay that tailgate down there. Now do keep in mind, you do not have to have a truck to run a rooftop tent. As long as your load bars are adequate distance apart, there are many SUVs and cars that are capable of running one of these. Next, what we're gonna do is release this retention buckle. She's gonna pull it out there. It stays in this clear plastic just for safekeeping so it's not flapping around. She's gonna depress that buckle there. Pull that out. That part's done. Next, we're moving over here to that same positive latch like you saw on the front. And repeat on the other side. Now that you have all the latches released and the retention strap is unbuckled, all that's left to do is pop the tent. All you have to do is give a slight push from the back and the struts do the rest of the work for you. And all you gotta do, go to the front and repeat. And you're set. Welcome home. Once your tents pop, all you have to do is take these rain guards or rain flaps, make sure that those are down. That keeps the zipper from being exposed to any rain, snow, weather in general. Just pull that down over the edge. Oy. You're good to go. Next, you want to get your ladder. You have the option of keeping your ladder in your truck, in the bed, or you can keep it in your roof nest. Roof nest provides an excellent bag that you can also store a few extra accessories in. Now we have our ladder out. We're gonna set that there because roof nest provides this nice dust-free, dirt-free sheet that you can use to lay down at the foot of the ladder. All you do is release the Velcro Go to your hooks. After that, it's up to you whether you want to set your awning out like a rain guard or if you want to roll them up safari style. You can see right here they have a predetermined hole. You slide your prong into with the hook facing down kind of go in at an angle, so it may be difficult to figure out the first. But the hook's going down. It's as simple as doing that, and you want them bowing out. Now you have your awning. You can repeat this on any side you want. Your doorways is a set for the ladder here, a set for the ladder here at the back side, and a set for the ladder here at the driver's side as well. And all the awnings can do the same. The other option you have, as mentioned before, is safari style. You can do this, and you have a little D-ring or O-ring. Put your tabs in just like that. You can do one or both. Keep them from flapping in the wind. Then you have this nice bug net right here. Then you can repeat and do as well. Next, we'll show you the interior. That's the best part. Because when you're done camping, all you gotta do is pack down and go. There's no breaking down the tent, no tent poles. You're done. Before we get up in the tent, Roof Nest has provided a boot bag or a shoe bag. And they have loops right here on the inside of the rain guard. It is kind of difficult if you have the awning rods 
situated, but no prop. And you can get up there. You don't have to have stinky hiking feet up in there. <laughs> Come on in. All right. Now I know it's hard to say the perspective of one of these things until you actually see one, but they're huge. They really are. I've been really impressed. And the unfortunate thing is Roof Nest is only out of Colorado and they ship from California, some situation like that. So you can't actually see one unless you go to their storefront. Southeast Texan, I took a gamble and well, it was worth it. So as you can see from the interior, you have your strut system, it's padded and it actually does come with an extra strut provided in the kit just in case one gives out i imagine and you have this cargo netting here that's able to be tensioned up so that way you can have it full tight but that allows us to put our beanies any electrical devices or anything like that just up out of the way at night it's also a really nice place to hang lanterns now i know a lot of you are curious how big you can be well i'm six foot one and i and laying all the way at the end, and I have plenty of room. You could probably be just shy of seven foot, maybe, and fit in here. Really incredible. Two people, no problem. And as you see here, we have our little bed and breakfast table there. So when we want to do our editing, boom, we have our own little tray table, plenty of room, and we got beautiful views out to the side. Hard to beat that. Now let's talk about lighting. Roof Nest does provide this nice little orb light that has a dim, bright, and a blink. But we'll be honest with you, the material that's made out of is equivalent to a blackout curtain. It gets super dark in here. You wouldn't even know that the sun was up until it probably started heating up in here. But I invested in a set of LED light strips that I went to a local electronics store. And what's great about it is they plug into a USB power bank that you can run, turn on, and you don't have to worry about it draining. We've been three days on it. It's only lost one bar, which has been incredible. But the amount of selectivity, you can even do many colors. This is not something that's required, but it makes for a really nice atmosphere. Now we'll talk about the shell. The shell is an ABS plastic reinforced with fiberglass, and it's fully insulated, both top and bottom. As you can see here, we'll pull back a little bit comes with a nice moisture barrier, pull it out and you'll see that it's also insulated right there as well. When you get to breathe in a lot at night, you develop a lot of moisture and changing in climates can also develop in a lot of moisture. You wanna keep the mildew out. Now the bedding is just about a three inch mattress and it's in between a full and queen size. And I'll be honest with you, we sleep on a purple mattress. This is not far from it. It's not close, but it's not far. It's hard to explain, but it's very comfortable. We'll just say that. But we have just regular bedding material around it and it's worked out great. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're packing out, this hinge strut assembly, they actually have a piece of the, the bedding cut out, carved out, because that lays down flush on the interior. You do not want to put anything right there when you're packing out. But when you're in use and you're actually staying in your tent, it makes a great cubby for putting makeup bags or your deodorants or any other kind of items you just want to stick over in the side. It's really nice. Let's talk about price point. These things are not cheap. They run in between the three to $4,000 range, but if you want to elevate your experience, have the added safety from wildlife and be able to bring yourself to some of the most incredible places in the world and not have to worry about packing in and packing out, one of these roof nests are incredible. I do want to throw out there that I'm not affiliated with roof nests by any means or any company affiliated with them. This is just me buying a roof nest, doing my own evaluation. And speaking of buying, I don't even own this yet. Roof Nest provides an excellent financing plan. So if you're ready to get out into the wilderness like my wife and I have, but you're willing to pay for it along the way, that's the option that I went with and it's very affordable. And that about wraps up my evaluation for the interior. Let's break this baby down and show you how easy it is to pack out. Before we pack out, I wanted to mention that we do keep a set of sleeping bags flat in here. They stay in the rooftop tent as well. This is just added insulation in case it gets really cold. The other night we were at mid 40s. It was a nice 60 degrees in here, which was perfect for us. We were nice and snug as a bug in a rug. We've collapsed the roof nest a handful of ways and we figured out it's best if we put a pillow here and a pillow here. Two up there makes it really hard to get the latches down in the front. Or we've also done it side to side like this. That way it avoids this net. Today we're gonna do it this way. We've also found that leaving the mosquito nets up and then just zipping down the flaps on the outside allows enough air to go out on the side while you try to compress the rear. And from there, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. All right, first we'll take the ladder, start at the top, and just nicely come down 
just like that. Got a little sand in them now, but they do end up a little bit more. As you go down, take your nice Velcro strap there, put it in there. We've already taken down our boot bag. It goes in there as well. And then, our dust mat goes in there as well. And as mentioned before, you have the option of storing this up in your roof nest, in the back of your truck, or in your cab. For now, throw it in there just like that. Collapsing the tent is pretty much the reverse of everything you've already done. You'll take your rain flap, do this all the way around. So your rain flaps up, you have your side zippers down, bug nets up. This one's going to stay loose. You've made sure that everything is out of the obstruction of the hinge assembly passage on the inside, as I mentioned earlier. And I usually do this with my wife and I, but I just want to show that this is capable of being done by just one person. You just lightly pull down on the back. You'll feel all the air rush out. Call this stuff in the cabbage. Once it's down, you just kind of lean forward into it. Stuff in on the side there stuff in on the side there. What's nice is that rod that sits on the inside of the flap will hold in once you do that. Now remember the retention strap. This is where it comes into play. You definitely want to do this. Find out the hard way. You don't use this. You got to drop the front. The back lifts up. You got to start all over. We have that nice and tight now. So normally my wife and I stand on both sides of the vehicle and pull down. It's really easy. But since it's just me, this makes for it being a really easy process. As you can see, the air is billowing out. This is actually not a process that you want to rush through. All right, now that you have everything down in the front, all you have to do is latch it. Just that simple. Now that you have the front latch, go ahead and release a little bit of tension on this buckle here. This will allow you to get enough room to stuff the cabbage. Looks like we're good on this side. The rain flap makes as a good tight knit. Fully release this buckle. That way you can get your pull strap up in there. Everything looks good. And if all is well, we're good there. Come back on your retention strap. This is just a, a double catch. I am not used to this high altitude. I feel like I've ran a mile. And that's that, you're ready to go. Well, that about wraps things up. If you enjoyed today's video, found it informative or helpful in making your decision to go with a roof nest or a rooftop tent in general, go ahead, give us a big thumbs up. Let us know how we're doing. For a heads up on any future installs or adventures, go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification bell, and you can follow us along on our journey. Remember, we at Gator Overland encourage each and every one of you to take a daily moment to unplug and reconnect with the outdoors, even if it's just for a few minutes. Or, or a week. week. <laughs> As always, we thank you for watching. Have fun. Keep it safe. And just go. Thanks, y'all.